I want to share with you the actions I'm taking against a unscrupulous professional. Of all people, my dentist. Um, at the end of 2019, um, I started having a pain in my cheek. Um, it was over here, and it was swollen. So uh, I went to the uh, Sliding Scale Health Clinic, and the nurse practitioner said, it's either your teeth or your sinus. OK. So it was very difficult finding a dentist because this was during holiday time. I myself was leaving on a trip to Miami um, by car with family and we were leaving on the 20th of December and I couldn't find an available dentist who had room, who had an appointment available and finally I found one on the 18th and I made an appointment for the 19th and I was leaving on my trip for the 20th so this was my only recourse. Um, it was a new dental office. I didn't know at the time, but she's a new dentist. She just graduated in 2019. Anyway, she had a fantastic personality, very skilled um, with the act actual dental work. Um, told me I had an abscess and you know when you have an abscess in the dental bone um, it has nowhere to go so it starts tunneling wherever it wants to and you know it ends up in your brain and my goodness my brain is my best part okay so started dental care um, she sent me to an expert in case I wanted to redo the um, the root canal and I didn't like that person they were awful they were oh, forget it I don't even want to talk about it so I ran back to the new dentist and I said uh, forget the root canal uh, just pull it out because that's your choice with this situation you get a root canal or you have the tooth pulled now I've had teeth pulled as a child that's when they put the mask on your face and they tell you to count backwards from 100 and then you wake up and your mother takes you for a banana split and it was so easy. This time it wasn't so easy. She, my dentist is very petite, um, feminine. She got in there and she was pulling and pulling and when you pull a tooth, you know, it's not all machinery. You you have to you have to have muscles. You know, it I, I it was like I was in a, a back of a barn with, you know, a cowboy dentist, but you know, I was all numbed up. But uh it's quite a feeling having them pull and pull and you're wondering will they pull out too much? Will they pull out something under the tooth they're not supposed to pull out? Anyway, then come the frightening instructions. You must not spit. You must not swallow. You must not drink water until the bleeding stops. So I had to go into Walgreens to get the prescription for, um, for the antibiotic. And, um, and I couldn't speak because my mouth was filling up with saliva and blood constantly. I couldn't speak, so I had to motion to them, give me, you know, to give me a piece of paper and I'll write what I need, you know. So I wrote down that I don't want the uh, capsule, I want the tablet form, and uh, this and that. And, you know, it was or an ordeal, and I kept having to leave the store and, and go... Um, remember, you can't spit. So the only way to get all that saliva and blood, bright red blood, out of your mouth is to just open your mouth 
and let it fall out like like that. I mean, what a sight this must have been. People stare at me as it is anyway during normal times. So five hours later, the bleeding stopped. And I was very worried during all this time because I have normal low blood pressure and I've got to drink a lot of water and I've got to do a lot of moving around. This is how I control my low blood pressure so it doesn't get too low. Physical activity and water. Okay. Anyway, that turned out all right. Next dental visit with my new petite dentist with the strong arms. Um, she, you know, took a fabulous modern x-rays, all this machinery I've never seen before, and, and showed me all the areas. These are old cavities from when I was like seven years old, you know. There, there's cracks now. It's been a long time. There's been cracks all around them, you know, bacteria gets in there, you know. So you really need crowns. So, so the end diagnosis was... You have one or more cavities in six teeth, and you need crowns in six teeth. <laughs> and, and thousands of dollars. So, um, so I thought about it for a few days, and I really had no other dentist to go to. It's like, like my neighbor across the street says, He's from New York. He says the veterinarians in New York are better than the doctors down here. I'm not sure about that, but um, right now, I don't have another dentist. Because after all this treatment, remember, she's very skilled, great personality, super friendly, but she won't answer my questions about important things. There's some kind of a bonding agent. Um, I think it's called uh, it's called adhesive. I don't want to give the company name. You know the company, the big chemical company. Big. Triple big. Anyway, she used that once. Um, they, they don't only use it on crowns. Uh, they use it for some some reason on fillings. I think under the uh, the filling material. Anyway, uh, her and the assistant were all masked 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 up, uh, so I don't think they could smell it. But um, as they were working in my mouth, the fumes from that thing was going in my nose. I couldn't breathe through my mouth. I had to anyway. Even if I was breathing through, through my mouth, those chemicals would be going in my lungs. So it only lasted a few uh, minutes, so, you know, I didn't say anything. You know, I must have asked, what was that smelly stuff? Oh, it's adhesive. Okay. But then another visit, they used it again. So after the second time, I said, look, if you're going to use that again, take a a two by two uh, piece of gauze and put it under my nose. Maybe you could put a little tape just around here to hold it because it smells so terrible, awful. And um, not that I mind smelling something bad, but it smelled like a, a really very toxic chemical like that could do damage. That's like, like poison. Um, anyway, I've been asking her for a long time, many months, what is in that adhesive? And uh, she never really answered me. And she said the company um, has a rule that uh, you're not allowed to give out information because it's our proprietary um, formula. You know, I guess they don't want anyone copying your formula. But I did find online that there's several chemicals that they are willing to to list and one of them is formaldehyde <laughs> I mean you know 
it's bad enough all the, the chemicals we're getting in the air we breathe, in the water we drink, in the products we buy, but formaldehyde permanently in my mouth? I mean, does it dissolve? Does, does it have symptoms? I, I mean, does it cause, cause some kind of side effect? I don't know. So then I kept asking her each visit. So then she started saying, well, I'm going to get you the information. Don't worry. I'll figure out a way. Another visit, she says, will you promise not to tell anyone else this information if I tell it to you? And I said, I don't even know how to answer that. Then another visit, she said, um, I'm going to look on the website of European um, dental sites and they're they're much more open than we are here in the United States and I'll get the information for you I'll, I'll give you that website okay another visit she says oh I'm so sorry I'm just so busy here and another visit she said oh my son is now doing homeschooling but I'll get it to you so I never got it okay fast forward in September, all of the dental treatments were finished. All the crowns were, were put on. One crown, it took like three times to, it never fit right. She had to get another crown from the lab. So after the last visit of these treatments, they said, well, can we make an appointment for your teeth cleaning? I said, well, no, I'm waiting to get an answer from the doctor about that ingredient I asked her about. I want to get that done first. And I asked the dental assistant um, whenever I want my records, you know, I'm, I want to give the doctor time to write her notes on today's visit. Um, how do I go about it? He said, just, just ask at the desk, you get it immediately. Okay. So I went back another day in person and I asked for my dental records and I was told well you know we can forward it to any other dentist you want. I said I just want it for myself and I need paper copies. I don't have a printer. I don't have a scanner. I just want paper copies. And all of a sudden this friendly staff all these months they weren't friendly anymore. They had a cold look on their face. They kind of answered me sarcastically. What did I do wrong? I asked for my records. Do you know that your doctor or dentist's office, they own the records, but I own the information on the records. And another thing, there's a lot of laws about what they can do with that record. But there's no laws regarding what I can do with the record. I can do anything I want with that information on the record. I could, I could plaster it all over Facebook, YouTube, a, a billboard a mile from here, anything I want with it. Okay, so why does this bother me so much? And I've been stressing about it ever since the last video I put up here. That's why I'm not putting up videos anymore. I'm just so stressed. And when I have a, a challenge like this, I just, I concentrate on it day and night and I make all kinds of phone calls and I do all kinds of research because that's how I am. I have a problem. I, I, I attack it until I solve it. And there might not be anything I could do about this, but I will keep trying. I've already given her bad reviews, and I put the truth in the review. She's very nice, very friendly, very skilled, but she doesn't want to answer questions about ingredients, and she doesn't want to release your records. Another thing, this office uh, has a new dentist, or, or two, or three, at, like every month. Why don't dentists stay there? Are they afraid to lose their license because, you know, they're not doing things so legally there, so ethically, uh, you know, with, with patient records? Oh, back to what my neighbor said across the street. 
when I told him all about this, he said, maybe she's pocketing the money from your treatment instead of handing it into the dental franchise because she's not the owner there. It's a group of dentists working for a dental franchise. Well, maybe. What, what bothers me is, did she make a mistake, some kind of terrible mistake that, that could result in a lawsuit if I read the record? Or is she going to write a new record and make it look better, which is illegal? You don't want a medical record as a nurse? You make a mistake in the patient's chart? You can't use whiteout. You can't get a new piece of paper. You take your pen and you draw one line through it and you write the correct thing above. That's it. Very strict. But what good are laws if they're not enforced? What good are laws if people don't mind lying? So that's my story. What have I done besides give bad reviews? Well, today I wrote to her dental college and I put the name of every single professor there who's in the dentistry faculty and asked them, what do I do about your graduate who will not give me the records? And I put her name there. Because in my opinion, if you can't do anything about somebody hurting you, treating you bad, then at least let everybody know about it. Everybody. That's the only thing you can do. But make sure whatever you write is legal. It's not nasty. And make sure you say something good about the person if there's anything good. Don't just say the bad stuff. Be, be fair. And what else? I was looking up places that you could complain. Yes, the State of Florida Board of Dentistry. I went online and they transferred me to some other Florida governmental agency. And they're going to send me a form where I can make an official complaint against her or against the office. Um, this reminds me of uh, a relative who, uh, a really bad relative, who stole everything, everything, money, land, business, everything from my father, my mother, and from me inheriting it. And there's absolutely nothing they could do about it. And nothing I can do about it. I've tried, but I can't. So what did I do? I wrote a book about it. And I hope you know that on Amazon, KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing, you, you can upload a book that you write yourself. And people will buy it, or they'll, they'll pay a little something um, so that they can read it digitally. And, you know, once in a while, somebody reads my books on there. And um, you can make a Facebook page about what this person did to you. You can take this book that you wrote on Amazon and take the link and put it on a Facebook page. And, and people will read it. And you don't have to mention full names. You, you don't even have to mention your name. You could write under a pseudonym. And I tell you, I, I wrote all about it, and I put the book on KDP, and I continuously get a notice that, um, that people are looking at it. And I put the last name of the family there, and there's a lot of people in the world with that last name. So I presume that my, my relatives, rel related to me some way, somehow, distant relatives, are reading about it. So in this way, I get the satisfaction that at least I did something to let the truth be known. Plus, I'm honoring my parents by telling their side of the story and what was done to them. So, 
don't get upset if uh, if you can't get back what they took from you but uh, be grateful that you don't do things like that and be grateful that we have the freedom to say something about it because it feels good to do something in fact uh, in the Christian scriptures it says if you have a matter against another go to the person face to face and tell them about it privately but then it says if they won't hear you then go to the elders you see so there's good advice all over the place in uh, religious books etc think about it and my problem is when I see ugly things like this happen, it, I just hate it because it's ugly. I mean, people should be doing beautiful things.